for an acoustic song, I was just like, it's it's really dark, you know. It's really yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really good. But um, I'm glad you you say that he's sober now because Jay, our bass player, who was in Bullet with me, he's like seven years sober as well, which is awesome. Hey, what's up, Musa? How are you, man? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Um, we chatted about over three years ago now. It's crazy. Yes, I remember. <laughs> yeah, it was when you hadn't even had a, the the center hadn't even came out yet. I think through the night was about to come out, maybe. Yeah, it was a, a long time ago. So I remember doing the interview in my old garage. <laughs> which yeah, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I knocked, I've knocked it down like like straight after that. So it's been in ages. Oh my gosh, that's wild, man! Yeah, you know, I'm excited to to talk to you again and kind of see what uh, what the band's been up to in the past few years because it was the middle of the pandemic, I think, last time we talked. Yeah, what a lovely time that was. <laughs> yeah, and I think you guys had to put the record out during that time as well. Yeah, I mean, from a musician who's used to releasing albums and touring, and then this one it was like you're gonna have to release it in like the worst time in in music history <laughs> i couldn't even do anything it was just like well what's the point of releasing music when i can't but you know it was what it was it still did okay so you know at least we get a second shot now yeah yeah no i know the album was still great and it did well and um i love what you guys are doing with this with this new one as well cool man thank you very much we definitely uh worked hard on this one yeah yeah well, um, again, this is about you and your journey in music. Uh, I don't know if you mind just recapping a little bit about kind of your story, and then I want to hear all about what what you've been up to and what the band's been up to, you know, over the course of the last few years with the the world finally opening up again in the new album. Yeah. Um, well, uh, I started Bullet back in ninety. Well, before it was called Bullet, uh, I started a band called Jeff Called John back in nineteen ninety six. It's turned out to be Bull from a Valentine because we needed new names. So I, I wrote down loads of band names, uh, which I thought were cool. And that was one of them, Bull from a Valentine. Yeah, was still a great cool. name. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was like, you know, what? if one, if I, if I die tomorrow, at least like I've done one thing, which will stick in people's minds. And, you know, <laughs> that come out of my little Welsh brain. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, didn't you all release the, was it the first album you, you released it? What in the UK on in October or something, and you waited in the US and put it out on Valentine's Day. Is that what I saw? Um, it was definitely a staggered release. Yeah, I think sure. you waited just because it was like, why not just do it on uh February 14th? Yeah, it was, it was probably <laughs> a, a record company idea. <laughs> uh, so you were born and raised in, in Wales, correct? Yep, still here now. That's where I am right now, South Wales. Um, yeah, I did that. Obviously, Bullet did well for you know the first, still, they still do yeah. okay, which Number is good. Number of years. Um, and then I left in 2016, officially left in 2017 or 18, and then started Kill the Lights and then released an album in COVID, like we just said. Yeah, and now, now we're here with album number two. Amazing. What you ended up leaving Bullet because you were having a, a baby, right? Is that what happened? Yeah, it was a few. It was a few ongoing issues there as well. So, yeah. but yeah, I my wife was pregnant, so uh, I I come home and hold my state. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I mean, that must be, that would be rough to be on the road so much, right, with a band and kind of being had to be away from all that, and then it's like, hey, I'm home. Okay, well now I got to go back out again or whatever, you know. Yeah, I said it's, I had a a few interviews um, previous. And um, when I was in Bullet, I had another. I've got another two kids, which are older now. They're like twenty one and and um, twenty, uh -huh. twenty two. I don't know whatever they're old. <laughs> and, um, when I when I was in Bullet, I never I never seen them because I was never home. Mm -hmm. So you know, at least the blessing in disguise really of the pandemic and leaving Bullet was my daughter's seven now, and I've been here every day. So you know, it's cool, and she's uh. And I, I have to prepare her now for when I go on tour because we got this tour booked. So I'm like, you know, I'm going away on back to work because that's what daddy does. And she's she gets it, but I don't think she'll get it till the day, you know? Yeah, till the day you have to go. Uh, did, was your daughter yeah. born in 2016? Yes, she was born in 2016. Okay. Yeah, yeah, my son was born in 2016 as well. He was born in April. So. Oh, awesome. Um, yeah, how about my daughter? She was April, April 20th. 
28th, uh, oh. 29th. I don't know. I, I, my, I was going to say, why well, someone was born on April 23rd. That would have been wild if it was the same day. Close, though. Yeah, some, <laughs> yeah definitely. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, so second grade, I would imagine. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we were, yeah, she's in <laughs> too, we call it. Uh, cool, man. Well, uh, just to back up real quick and to just get a kind of a brief history of of, of your music career uh, prior to Bullet, uh, did you come from like a creative or musical household at all? Or were you the only one in the family that was kind of driven to do this? Um, no, my parents are not driven musically at all. I mean, um, they listen to music and that's where I got my cool you know, um, influences from like Queen and the Beach Boys and Phil Collins and stuff like that, you know. Um, but as playing music, they never um, touched an instrument at all, which is funny because I'm a drummer, I've done well, and my brother's in a band now and he's doing really well. So it's just, it's, it's very strange. Oh, really? I didn't know that you have, your brother's in a band. Yeah, they're, they're doing really well here in the UK. They call Those Damn Crows. They're, they're doing quite well. I think I've heard the name actually. Them, those damn crows. That's cool. What does he do? Is he a guitar player, a singer, a drummer? He's a guitar player. And he just he doesn't say a word. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you started on guitar, right? Is that I remember? Yeah, I did. I mean, I still love guitar now because that. I think that's why I become a drummer, really, because all I, I love hearing guitar players play. Mm -hmm. So I think I become a drummer to influence, you know, to support the music that I love really because I've been to drum clinics and I've I've watched drummers drum and drum solos and stuff and I, it, it just doesn't get me as but if I watch a guitar player I'm like oh that's way better so, like drumming on my own I just find really yeah. boring but drumming with someone playing guitar that's way better for me yeah did you start playing drums as kind of like a necessity I know uh I, growing up as a kid I, I was never in any bands that did anything or I'm not a very great player any by any means but like it was always so hard to find a drummer. It was like the drummer always had the pick of the litter as far as bands that they wanted to play. And they'd always be in like five bands. And, you know, it, I feel like with drums, you kind of have definitely more of an opportunity to kind of play with who you want because it's harder to find them. Yeah, definitely. There was a massive group of friends. It was like 20 to 25 friends. and they, Everyone played guitar. Right. <laughs> Like one drummer, and he was like twenty years older than all of us. We were like, ah, oh, you know, play it. So then all I could do was drums as well when I put on music. So I was, I bit the, bit the bullet, excuse the pun. And <laughs> Padge actually sold me my first drum kit. Padge was a drummer, uh -huh. and he didn't want to play drums, so he sold me. I didn't ask my mum or my dad. I just bought them. And um, <laughs> where they had so happy to bring that home. Like, oh, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, so you know, I'm forever in debt for my parents letting me uh, play, know, right? Not throwing them away. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, and did you ever jam with your brother? Is he younger than you, older than you? Um, he's 18 months older than me, but no, I've never, I never jammed with him, which is weird because when, like, I didn't really have time when I was like a bullet kicked off when I was 21, 22. Mm -hmm. So then I'd only been playing drums for uh, like six years, I think, six, seven years. Mm -hmm. And I was all back and forth London trying to get the band record deals anyway. But yeah, but he's home now. I, wish I really should have a job. I know it would make my mom happy. Yeah, do a little, uh, yeah, family band. That'd be yeah. rad. Put a record out or something. Um, wow, well, yeah, because you did Bullet for a number of years, right? Uh, 98 or six or whatever the band started through, you played up till seven years ago or so yeah um, that was a real you know best times of my life so far you know th thinking about grow i mean i was growing up touring the world which was you know it was incredible it was like someone gave me a set of keys for the planet and i was like hey. <laughs> yeah i got to see the world play with some i'm sure some amazing i mean i think you guys you've opened up for like iron maiden and metallica and like all these the greats uh of the you know the metal hard you know that genre yeah yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, there's the people we've played with. I mean, it, it does not get any bigger. I mean, we were like having conversations with, you know, Lars from Metallica, and I was just like, well, fuck me, man. I'm only like fucking 20, fucking two. <laughs> yeah, you're playing like arenas, I would imagine, right? Stadiums with Metallica. That was huge. Jesus. That's so crazy. Um, yeah. yeah. So, how long? So, you went once you left Bullet, 
when do you eventually start kill the lights? Was it fairly quickly or like, was it okay? I, I'm kind of, did you think you were done with music at that point or you just wanted a break? Um, at the time I thought I was, I was done, but then thinking about it, I just needed, I just needed a good break, you know? So I think it was about a year. And then I was just like, ah, you know, I've got to do something. And I, I didn't listen to music. I didn't put the radio on or nothing. But really? I was, yeah, I just completely fell out of love with music. Um, do you feel like I, you were burnt out on it? Or I mean, to do that for so long and that's kind of, you know, album tour, tour, you know, you, you were po probably constantly so busy. Yeah, I mean, it became a machine in the end. And to be honest, the fun was gone um, mm -hmm. because it become more of a business. And, you know, you you know, people saying you can't do this and you can't do that. And um, I don't know, it just got, it just plays, and then it plays on you mentally, you know, and then you're just like, well, why am I here? You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. So I think I just, it was the right time to go. Mm -hmm. And I needed a break. And then about 2018, I thought, well, I've done it before. Let's do it again. See how far we can go. So uh, I wanted to start another band. And then I didn't want to be in a band with strangers because they might they might not like me. And I might, uh, might not get on with those guys. And then, you know, six months down the line, it'll be game over, you know. So I was like, well, let's pick some members who you've toured with and, you know, which are cool guys to hang out with. So I just text Jordan because uh, still remains in Bullock toured quite a, uh, quite a fair bit together back in the day. Mm-hmm. And so was that like you just text him, hey, I kind of want to start a band. Like, what what do you are you down or like how how did the conversation begin to even form form this band? I think I I need to remix. It's still I think it's still on my phone. I have to dig it out. I was like, got any riffs? <laughs> that was it. <laughs> that was it. Got any yeah. riffs? <laughs> and, it was like, and it just threw me like thirty or forty like song ideas, and I was just like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow so yeah so he was already he was with still remains was he still playing with them at the time um yeah they, they've always been like um i don't think they've officially ever broken up they just like got jobs and you know priorities come different ways for them so they just do like sh uh shows here and there and albums here and there and stuff so um they never really broke they're still going now they got two shows coming up but yeah he was just over the course of not touring and, and working and stuff, he was just writing songs for like 10 years. And then he just said, what do you think of these? And then they ended up on the center. Wow. And were, was he living in Wales or like, how did you, because I know you have members all over the place, right? right? Like Texas uh, and Minnesota, I think one of your, one of your guys lives in Minnesota. Like it's kind of all over the place, right? Yeah. Um, Jordan's Grand Rapids, Michigan. Oh, Michigan. That's what it was. Yeah, so that was, I was just like, okay. I mean, we were just file sharing via the internet, and then we got James in, which is from Minnesota, which I knew his band from the fight open for Bullet in 2013. And then he was in, so I was like, okay, Jordan and James needed to meet. So I just said, let's fly to Jordan. Well, Jordan said, fly here, and then we'll just crack on with it. And that's what happened. Just the three of us wrote the cinema then. Wow. And you wrote the center before the pandemic and all that had happened, right? Yeah, it was all done. Yeah, I think I recorded it. I finished recording in June or July of 2018. Okay. And then finished. You, you, you waited. Like, what was the purpose of waiting, like, you know, a year, year and a half to, to release the album? So we self funded the recording of the center. And then we were basically dishing it out and to labels because it was all ready to go. So it's e it's kind of easier to get a deal that way because all they have to do is just, well, okay, release it. Yeah. And then um, Fearless were like, yeah, cool. Okay, we'll have it. So we, and we took a long time agreeing terms of the deal. And then yeah. Martin Manson was signing to a, um, another record label, which was co-owned with Fearless. And all the lawyers were taking up a lot of time with Martin Manson. Uh -huh. So that pushed, that pushed hours back, and then obviously the pandemic come. So yeah. Oh, did you have the same manager as Marilyn Manson then? Or no, were you saying, oh. um, same they, label. Say, oh yeah, okay. So it was just that yeah, they were getting him, so, so to speak, and it was like yeah, you know. <laughs> he's, he was the bigger fish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, just a little name recognition there, a bit. Um, not that Bullet doesn't have that, but I mean, yeah. Uh, to so when you guys start, it's. 
all file sharing in the beginning. And that kind of almost worked out, right? When it came to like the pandemic happening, it was like, oh, well, we already kind of know how to do this. We were, you were like ahead of the game in, in, in a way when it, when the band started. Yeah. I mean, um, the first time Jordan heard the drums for the sinner really was when I finished recording them. <laughs> so he, he was like completely trusted me really. So I was like, that was cool. Yeah. But when the pandemic hit, it was, Okay, same old, same old. I prefer to do it with the guys all in the same room, which we did 80% of once Canada opened. We all flew there. We'll get on to that in a minute. But yeah, it was um okay. File sharing it is when we stuck at home for the next however long it was. Okay. And then you were doing, I think you guys were doing like some of those like streaming shows, weren't you? At one point or another? Yeah, that was, that was strange as well because I recorded my parts in... Wales in Cardiff. Uh-huh. All of the other guys recorded their parts in their own cities as well. But but then it was all put together. It was quite clever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But as far as like playing live, like you have probably hadn't played with each other in a live setting or like in front of you know people until after that, right? Yeah, I mean, obviously, we released the album and then we had to cancel tours, put tours back. So we only did like ten shows. For the center and they were all in the uk so yeah so now we're just like come on let's go yeah it's super stoked so then you said you went to canada like at what point do you go is that when you start working on this new record yeah obviously um canadian border open to vaccinated americans and uk um mm-hmm. people so we were like no brainer if that's the only place we can go to you know get a good chunk of this album written. So we all just flew to Windsor in Canada and just stayed there for like 10 nights and wrote 80% of the album. Wow. And what, what year was that? Was that 2020 or 2021 at that point? I would have been 2021. Okay. So you yeah. had already had, cause the center was done, right? That was done in a while b- before and yeah. the record had a chance to come out, but it was during a time when touring was non-existent. And then it's like, were you guys working on this next coming record? Cause I remember we were talking and you said, Oh, we have so many other songs. Like we have so many, we have enough songs for another album. Were those the songs that ended up making this or was it all over fresh and you just have a bunch of songs in the can from the center? Um, in between the center and this new album recording it, we released a song for, called dead from the start. That was a kind of, left over then we re-recorded a song because Jay joined the band the ex bullet bass player joined the band and he did we re-recorded a song with his vocals on but yeah there's still a bunch of leftover sinner stuff still in the can because we like to keep them there but but then like if like right fresh if they wasn't used for the first time then they're obviously not as good as what we think they are you know yeah you just have them they're just there on a drive yeah that's wild. Um, so then you go to Canada and do you, at that point going in there, was it everyone was starting fresh or did you have some stuff together? Like were you file sharing and had a, a base for what this record would look like? Or was it, let's just meet there and, and start at zero and see what we can come up with. Yeah. Before the pandemic in 2019, we all flew to LA to meet the label. Mm-hmm. You know, our, hello. And we just hung out there and we, while we were doing that, we wrote Broken Bones, which was the first single off Death Melodies. Okay. So that was that was already, well, it was half there. It had a verse and a chorus, and that was it. And then, yeah, that's all we had. And I think due to the pandemic, Ma- there's a song on the album called Man Without a Face. That was a file sharing song, too. So that was there as well. So we kind of like had a song and a half. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, that was it. There. And then you get to, it. and and in 10 days you write the rest of the album. Yeah. I got to Canada a uh, night before the guys checked into the hotel, met the guys in the Airbnb the next day, set up a little studio and just, it just poured out. It was just like, whoosh, it just flew out of us because we love music. We love writing music. And then we haven't been together for a while. So we were just jamming and having fun. And, that, and that's the best way to write music, I think. Yeah. So does it how, like with a song? Do you come up with a, a, a like a killer drum beat, and you're like, okay, this is kind of what I'm thinking, and then they write over it, or is it 
a bunch of different variables maybe you'll have they'll have a riff together and you kind of play to it like how how do you guys kind of begin a, a song um uh, mainly we'll all just be sitting around and the guys with the guitars be just jamming away and then i'll be like what's that right there and they'll be like what well, this and i'll be like okay and then that's how it kind of starts and then i'll give my ideas and i'll because i'm shit of writing like tapping drums in so i'll I'll go, Travis, this, and because Travis is like, so Travis, <laughs> Travis will put my input, my thoughts into the drums on the computer. And then, oh, just, just go so you start it that way. You start with, okay, you, okay, I would do this or I try to do this. So then it's all done that way, like just through the computer. And then you'll go, okay, and then put it on. And then you just add your flavor and do the yeah, live drums at that point. Exactly. Interesting. And that is that. What, like, how different was this, obviously, writing this album, was it much different than the first one? Because even the first one, you could, you guys got together at one point, right? Or was the whole first album just file sharing that became put together? Um, I think when me, James, and Jordan first went out for the, the Grand Rapids meeting and uh, trip, I think we wrote three songs on, on those four days. So, yeah, so we kind of knew how we worked, you know, together anyway. But th we had the added bonus of having Travis help us write on this one because he didn't, he only wrote his solos on Sinas, but this time he come more of a, as a, like a, a, a fourth party right in. Mm -hmm. part. It's so that I'm sure that it's, so that's cool that you can all kind of get together and write, right? Instead of having one primary person that's going to write all the songs and then you all just kind of go, okay, this is what they want to do. And then we'll jump on that. It's no, here's, here's what we're going to do. This is the, 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 everyone has an equal voice. It sounds like. Oh yeah, definitely. Because otherwise you're not going to get like if Travis or Jordan is stuck or if I'm stuck, I'll say, Oh, what do you want me to do on this part? And we all just say like, be yourself. What would, what, you know, mm -hmm. you. everyone knows how you sound when you play your instruments and just put your own part on there. And I think that's how you get your voice out. You know, everyone knows, how I play drums and hopefully people will know when it's me playing drums because it is me playing drums and that's how I play my drums. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you've got, and you're going to release the album in March, right? Next month. It's, it's not very far away. I can't believe we're already halfway through February. I know. Yeah. March 8th. Wait. March 8th. And then you're doing a tour alongside it. And this will, will this be kind of the first big tour for the band? Yeah. I mean, this will be the first tour yeah, first headline run. That's gonna go across UK and Europe. Away. That's exciting. Have you done any US shows yet or not yet? No. And then um that's our next big uh, thing after we finish this European tour. We're gonna all eyes are set now on America and Canada, uh, because the label are there. Eighty percent yeah. of eighty percent of the band are there. So I'm like, me and Jay just hop on a on a plane and get touring. Wow. Why why did you guys decide on on the UK first? Just because it was um, I mean, had you already booked it or I mean to do it, it's just it's cool that you're doing that. Don't don't get me wrong. But yeah, you're like, OK, we'll do that. And then we have our eyes set on the US. Yeah, um, we've already toured. Like we played like 10 shows. here, So we thought we, we may as well just go there first. Sure. <laughs> Was your last tour a headlining tour as well? Or is this your first so, real headline? We opened for a band called Bleed From Within. And then we hopped off that and jumped on a uh, opening slot with a band called Monuments. Okay. So this time you guys are you you're the you're the the headliners. That's in, that's exciting. Yeah. The only thing about headlining is just waiting around all day. <laughs> <laughs> right. You're like okay, we get to play at uh, ten or whatever. You yeah. know, you got to kind of wait around. Yeah, which is weird because I've been off for so long, and now my kids are. You'll probably get this as well. I'm like, I'm a, really, I'm in bed, but. 8 30 you're sleeping by 9 30. <laughs> oh man tell me about it yeah it's like and then i'm up at 5 30. <laughs> by, by the time the band is ready to play i'm like i should be in bed <laughs> <laughs> you're like wake me up in two hours when we go on it's my <laughs> my bedtime was a couple hours ago yeah exactly but it's gonna be fun like i'm wait. yeah how do you guys re like rehearse for something like this just because everyone's kind of all over the place do you get a lot of time together as you know as a band um no so what we do is individually we'll rehearse like i'll come up here just jam out in my room oh rad 
um, make sure all the songs are where I want them to be. And then we'll just all meet like a week before rehearsal in a space. So then all jam together and hope it goes well. <laughs> <laughs> and do you like going to this Airbnb in Canada and, and doing majority of this record there? Is that something that you, you all just do as a band and um, or do you bring a producer in? Like, who, how do you record and, and produce the record? Is it, or is it all done be, between the, the guys in the band? Uh, the band will write the songs first and then we'll hand our demos over to whoever's producing and, you know, accept their ideas if they're good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but the, the, the main recording is already done within with you guys. You're not yeah. going back and re-recording anything? Yeah, I'll, I'll go once the the songs are set in stone and everyone's happy with their parts. I'll I'll go in and re-record like a full full on kit and okay. do it that way. Okay, and then you send that to whoever's producing it, and they just kind of lay it all together. I'll I'll do that with the producer then. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah. the guitars and everything's done, and then you come in and do the drums with the producer, and then everything kind of yeah. Goes yeah, then they once my drums are properly done then the boys will kind of go back and revisit their guitar parts and if stuff has changed, which changes a lot, actually, once I drrum for properly, you'll, m more ideas kind of spin yeah, spark. out. Yeah, spark, um, yeah. Did you do the drums in Canada or did you come back home and do them in Wales? No, the drums were done in Derby in England. Oh, really? Yeah, which is awesome. A lot of people had recorded there, so... um. Uh, is we that went. really i my uh a band that i knew or know the the, the struts they're from darby and they oh, okay. I, I didn't know that they that there's that was a big place to record because when i've talked to them like oh it's this little town kind of just in the middle of you know the uk and so is that there's a spot there that a lot of bands go to to record oh yeah it's quite um quite a famous recording studio it's called backstage studios owned by a guy called andy sneep who's a massive uh influence uh producer in metal okay and he's also he's now in judas priest which is also oh no way is he really yeah that's wild and yeah, what's that studio called because i'm just gonna look, i'm gonna look it up when we're done with this interview because i'm curious called backstage studio backstage that's yeah. rad yeah because i i've i've known these guys for a while i was on terrestrial radio and kind of was the first person that played them and then they they've done well since you know and uh they've had some big records on on movies and, and radio and they're from Darby. And every time I talk to them, I'm like, Oh yeah, it's just this little town. You wouldn't know it. Like, no. Yeah. And then to hear that there's this, you know, this super famous recording studio, that's all brand new news to me. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, he, um, I recorded two songs for the poison in that studio too. So uh, it was like, it's been going a long time. Wow. I didn't, uh, yeah, that's crazy. Mm. Um, so you got the tour going, you got the album coming out. Um, all exciting, exciting stuff. Is there a song on the album that, you know, happened and you, you guys were like, oh my gosh, like I can't believe we were able to, like, was there something that kind of just sparked out of nowhere that you can remember, like a big milestone moment in the recording process? Um, yeah, so the last song, Drowning, when I first heard that, I was just like, okay, this is, this is like another depth to the band, which I didn't think we'd have. Mm -hmm. uh, blew me away and Sleep of the Devil, the acoustic track on there. Oh Which, yeah. When, yeah, when um like all of the harmonies and the gospel bit comes in at the end, I was just like, where the fuck did that come That's from? That's a great song. I mean, and the and the meaning behind it, just what I was reading, I mean, the 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 addiction and the alcoholism, like the the battle that that he goes through on a daily basis. I can relate to that. I'm an, an AA and, and you know I've been sober for a while now and when I oh, heard the song, I was like, yeah, I was like, damn, like, this is real. This really hits home. Like, it's, and yeah. I kind of thought it was about that. And then when I w went and read the press release kind of uh, talking about what, it, what you know, the, the meaning of the, the song, I was like, wow, okay, this is why this really hits. I oh, think yeah. It's such a great song. It's like, for an acoustic song, I was just like, it's, it's really dark, you know. It's really yeah. <laughs> It's really good, but um, I'm glad you, you say that he's sober now because Jay, our bass player, who was in Bullet with me, he's like seven years sober as well, which is awesome. Wow, that's huge. Can yeah, tell him congratulations. I mean, that's such a big accomplishment, man. I mean, I still yeah. go to, to meetings you know, multiple times a week, and and it's just it's changed my life. I know I, I'm not some advocate 
or not some mouthpiece for AA, but uh, it helped me, man. And, and and whenever I hear songs like that and hear people that have had long term sobriety, it's really inspiring. Oh yeah, Jay's like he's he's more hilarious. He was hilarious anyway, but now he's sober. I'm like I can't get away from like just side splitting laughter. He's, he's even more. He's like a hundred percent more funny than he was, which is weird. <laughs> <laughs> I want. It was probably more creative too when it comes to the the whole process of of playing in the band and everything. Yeah, he's a lot. He's way tighter than he was. Well, he's just like, it's just he's just straight head now. It's just, and he knows exactly what he's doing. He's more. He's more like Jay present. <laughs> you yeah, know I mean? you know, hundred yeah. percent. That's awesome. Yeah, I think that's such a great song, and I can't wait till you guys come to the the states, man. I'm excited. I'm in Nashville now. Last time we spoke, I was in San Diego. So, um, yeah. you, you, I'd love to see you all here. Uh, okay, in, if you were in San Diego before. I always took my friends going to San Diego and I was like, there's this barbecue place in San Diego I went to and the line was just right around the corner and we managed to, to get in. Do you know what it's called? A barbecue place. Yeah, oh. San Diego. I don't know, to be honest. I'm trying to think because it's like known for like the Mexican restaurants. So barbecue is an interesting one. Yeah, I know because uh, Blink got they have that big burrito, that Blink White 2 burrito thing. Yeah, yeah, it's sombreros. That place was what's crazy is I grew up uh, in adjacent to Poway, where those guys are all from, and the the sombreros that they sing about in that song is the one that's right by where I grew up, my parents' house. And you go in there now; it used to be really small, and like in the bathroom, there's all these like love letters and like in graffiti, like to to Blink, and they expanded it and they saved the door and they moved it to the new location so they still have all the writing on it. it's pretty pretty wild <laughs> yeah <love> yeah <laughs> i wish i knew the barbecue place i'd have i'm gonna have to think about that because i have no i'm trying yeah, the line was huge i was just like where we gotta go here we gotta go here <laughs> yeah i wonder what part of san diego do you remember Ugh. where did, yeah. did you guys play? was it with bullet did you guys play san diego yeah it was if we ever played san diego it was so soma Oh yeah, Soma. Okay, we played that venue, but I don't know. I think it was probably a, like an hour out of there. It wasn't near the venue. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. But um, yeah, I I I don't know. I wish I knew. I wish I could tell you. <laughs> Just because I don't think of San Diego and barbecue, but that's crazy. That I'll, I'm definitely gonna have to look into this because I lived there pretty much my whole life, and I and I can't think of uh, where that would be. <laughs> Maybe I dreamt it. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't, they could be, man. I mean, there's a lot of great restaurants there, uh, but a lot of, whenever I talk to them, I'm like, Oh, I went to the so-and-so Mexican restaurant or whatever it may be, but barbecue, that's, in, I would think more for Nashville <laughs> with the barbecue, but yeah, that's cool. Yeah. We had a day off in Nashville once. Nashville's the music city, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 And everyone dressed up as cowboys. And so we thought it'd be good to, to dress up as cowboys. We just look like a pair of twats. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. When I moved here, I thought for sure this was just all country music town, which it is heavily. But there's, you know, so many bands of all genres live here and so many artists of all. It's pretty wild, like more more than so than I would ever imagine. Uh, you'll have artists here. Like I just saw Brandon from Atreyu at the UPS by my house. I'm just like. That, you live in that, you know, you live here now. Like, it's just wild. I figured it would just be all country artists. Yeah, it's awesome. There's yeah. a studio. We were, we were going we to gonna do an album. Me and Padge met with Nick Raskulinix because we mm -hmm. were thinking about working with him. And he had a studio there, I think. Yeah, I think he does. That that does sound familiar. So we went there, had a meeting, and then we drank. He gave us, like, beers. <laughs> we made, <laughs> like... And we we all we all had to stay in Nashville or like the airport or something. Oh, so that's we, rad. Yeah, it was well, awesome. Well, I hope you come back through, especially with uh, Kill the Lights. I'm excited. Oh uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's the that's the goal for this year and next year. Killer man. Well, I appreciate your time again. Thank you so much, Moose, for doing this again. Um, it's always a pleasure to chat with you, and it's rad to hear you know kind of what what's been going on over the past three three years since we talked last. Yeah, let's not make it three years again. Let's do yeah, that. Yeah, I know. Hopefully, maybe we can get an in-person one when when you guys come to Nashville. <laughs> or I'll drive Definitely. to you. <laughs> um, I have one more 
I have one more question for you. I asked you this last time, but I'm going to ask again. Uh, if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Um, it's going to be tricky at the start. You're going to get a lot of negative people. Don't listen to them. Just If you believe in what you're doing, just keep going. Bring it back.